to problem number three, which is dealing with complex stress states. Draw out the stress tensor and calculate unknowns. So we have the following stress state here. So we have this compressive stress and this tensile stress. So if I want to draw out my stress tensor, so stress tensor is going to be in the 1, 1 direction, minus 89, times 10 to the 6 pascals. In the 2, 2 direction, I am going to have 50 times 10 to the 6 pascals. And everywhere else, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So I know I'm going to also have a strain in the 1 direction. That is going to be equal to 1 over e times sigma 1 minus nu times sigma 2, 2. I'm already in the principal stress state as well. So 2, 2 is also equal to stress in 2, 2 minus nu times stress in the 1 direction. So all that right before we kind of write out our problem. Also, we can go ahead and write out the strains as well. So I know that 1 and 4 are aligned in the same direction in 1, 1. So strain 1 equals strain in 4, which is equal to strain in the 1, 1 direction. And then 2 and 3, same thing here. Strain in 2 is equal to strain in 3, equal to strain in 2, 2 direction. All right, so let's go ahead and read uh, our problem here. So the material is a piece of saran wrap. Um, so saran wrap is actually made of low-density polyethylene, so polymer. So I know that this modulus is 1 GPA, approximately. Nu is equal to 0 0.4. Uh, my gauge factor, F, is equal to 3.7. The strain gauge resistances are all this. So I know if my resistances are all equal, I know that my initial voltage at balance was equal to 0 uh, volts. And the output voltage is 700 millivolts once the stress is applied. So we need to write out the full stress and strain tensors quantitatively, calculate the strain in each gauge quantitatively, and what's the excitation voltage um, of this Wheatstone bridge. We know that our delta V naught is equal to 700 times 10 to the minus 3 volts. So we are going to use in this problem our delta V naught, that's what we got, is over 4 right here times, oops, epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 minus epsilon 3 plus epsilon 4. So all we have to do, we know this, this, and all these, we just need to figure out what's our VI. So let's go ahead and solve that, uh, this problem. So let's go ahead and write these values out. So I'm going to say that my sig 1, 1 is equal to minus 89 times 10 to the 6th. My sig 2, 2 is equal to 50 times 10 to the 6th. My E equals 1 times 10 to the 9th. My nu is equal to 0 0.4. And what else do we have? F is equal to 3.7. My E11 is equal to 1 over Y. Actually, can't have E there. Y. 1 over Y times sig 1, 1 minus nu times sig 2, 2. My E22 E2, 2 is equal to 1 over Y times sig 2, 2 minus nu times sig 1, 1. What else do we know here in this problem? So let's go ahead and oh, we know our delta v naught. Delta v naught is equal to oops, 300, 700 millivolts. 700 times 10 to the minus 3. And all right, we also know that. Let's go up here, move our stress state. I know that my E1 is equal to E11, my E4 is equal to E1. My E2 is equal to E22, and my E3 is equal to E2. There we go. So let's go ahead and calculate those values. Thinking, thinking, Mathematica. But again, good, since I made sure to quit my kernel. So we actually already know our stress state. So I could actually write out E11, E22. We have those values. So that's kind of solving full stress and strain tensors, done. We're also in principal stress state as well. What's this uh, strain in each gauge quantitatively? It's this. Now actually, for full credit, what would you also need to answer or to write in this problem? This. But because there's no temperature information and because it's a full Wheatstone bridge con uh, configuration, you're going to see that those are going to cancel out anyways. But that's for full completeness. So you should write that out as well. But I'm kind of skipping a step because I know that in a full configuration, they're going to have to cancel out. So only thing left to solve for, I just need to solve for solve. Delta V naught divided by 
vi, set that equal to, I'm paranoid, so I always need my parentheses, f, f divided by 4 times e1 minus e2 minus e3 plus e4. And I'm going to solve for vi. And here we go. That's my input voltage initially. Uh, <laughs> so again, a little bit of a kind of a nonsensical kind of negative problem here. But again, uh, that's the kind of solution here. So it's actually not a nonsensical, but it's just negative voltage that's applied here. So a little bit of different uh, kind of problem. So that's it. That's all that you can really we've solved all this problem. So again, just make sure when you're writing out the stress state, what are the stresses applied? Solve for those values. Uh, where is the strain gauge aligned? So again, one is aligned with this one one direction. So two is aligned in the two two direction, and that's going to measure the strain. And again, it's measuring the strain along these wires. So that's it uh, for this problem. Please let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.